Game storage boxes. You may suggest this isn't the most exciting subject in the world, but I beg to differ. These boxes were the gateway to alternative universes, to voyages beyond the keyboard, to the tranquility of your favourite game titles. We talk about bags for life now, whereas back in the 80s and 90s we were constantly told that plastic bags could take your life, to the point actually where I had an irrational fear of them. But man, these game cases were boxes of life. They also set apart people who stored their games like this to those who stored them like this. Although I must say I'm a fan of both storage methods. But organising your game titles was as essential back then as it is now for collectors. You didn't want to be searching around under the sofa for Quackshot at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. You wanted the game accessible and ready to go. A suitable storage method was even more essential if you were taking your games, or even console, round to your friend's house for a quick dabble. This is why then game storage boxes hold a special nostalgic place in my mind. Let's begin in the 1980s with cassettes and a storage vessel shared among both music and gaming fans. Walkman owners were as likely to use these briefcase styled boxes as gamers, but only a Philistine would mix the two. These stylish stripe designs are something I remember being particularly popular, and looking at them now they're just so incredibly 80s. It makes the games lurking inside them seem all that more appealing if you ask me. If you had a larger collection you could step up to a slightly longer example, with a hefty handle for the hardcore tape purchaser. This wouldn't look too out of place chained to your arm to be honest. And currently this box has a mishmash of software, but really you'd want to organise it so it looked more like this. Maybe by publisher, maybe by game type, or just a collection of treasured titles. The serious purveyor might have had something like this briefcase sized model, which can accommodate a whopping 45 cassettes. But even this wasn't large enough to secure the Spectrum collection shared by my brother and I. I think we chose to keep the best games in a couple of cases and the rest were just held in a co-op bag or something, probably where I get my joint love for both organisation and complete chaos today. But the truly demanding amassa of games probably had something like these desktop units. And whilst we're here, do you remember these VHS and Betamax boxes? Back when people wanted their videotapes to look like books. What a dignified era we lived in. But in dignity lies betrayal, and when I did finally betray Sinclair in the 90s and got a Commodore 64, I actually used this drawer type storage unit. I think I bought it from the Sunday market for about £10, but it was particularly useful for housing my Commodore 64 on top and keeping the software ready to go directly underneath it, although it did make typing a bit of a chore. Although back then, we weren't really bothered by things like that. And of course, storage wasn't just a problem for cassette based games. When I moved on to floppy disks with my Amiga, Atari ST and ultimately PC, I didn't want to leave them piled up next to the monitor, losing their magnetisation. I wanted a tidy unit that could pack a shed ton of floppy disks, neatly and efficiently. Things weren't quite as exciting with floppies, other than keeping massive boxes like this power pack lying around, these lockable units were a common sight sitting next to your home computer, and I went through at least three myself. They came in various shapes and guises, all capable of holding more discs than stipulated in their design specification, and usually with the same key. But looking back, packing those floppies into cages like this was just demeaning, and also potentially bad for their longevity. Unlike cassettes, storing these floppy disks away usually meant chucking the bulky boxes they were sold in. And it's the same when CDs came along. Dual cases were small and compact, fitting nicely into a rack, but so many big boxes were chucked away because of it. The pleasure of hindsight leaves a feeling of dread in your stomach just thinking about it nowadays. And for better or worse, it wasn't long before the industry moved onto a standard storage format that could be stored compactly on a shelf. Of course, even cartridge based consoles and in particular handheld devices posed entirely new problems which required entirely new storage solutions. If you were anything like me then this Mega Drive storage unit seemed like an essential purchase. Unfortunately I never got hold of one, probably because for a piece of plastic 
it was quite overpriced. But what I do have here is a Sega Genesis video game caddy. Mm, just look at that checkered box. Room for 15 cartridges and game instructions. Protects your Sega Genesis cartridges from dirt, damage and loss. What you mean like the actual game boxes did already? Looking back now, like the floppy disk and CD-ROM holders, these things are a modern day collector's nightmare. Console boxes were smaller and so usually were retained, Master System and Mega Drive boxes were particularly rigid and could be thrown in the attic for years, but many of those Super Nintendo cardboard sleeves were just left in piles, getting crushed and ultimately thrown away. I mean this holder is just a piece of moulded plastic, it's not really glamorous or special, but it was that darn Sega packaging which enticed me every single time. It was always the packaging, that's why it's so important to collectors nowadays. Something that was probably of greater importance was storage for your portable games, and even the console itself if you so desired. These original Game Boy cases certainly fitted the bill, allowing you to store all your games and accessories in one box, but it really throws the portable aspect out of the window. Look at the size of this thing. Of course you could get smaller cases, but the Game Boy was durable enough to be chucked in a bag and be done with it. You could get similar boxes for your main console, which was useful for lugging around to Barry's at number 27, but frankly moving my consoles about did used to cause me upset and anxiety in the 90s. Having to unplug everything, pack it up, go down the road. To be honest Barry, I'm just going to stay at home mate, I mean we can wait for the internet to play two player games. These days, if you are a collector, you're likely to have your own games on a shelf. Pretty much every YouTube channel I watch has games on a shelf. I mean, I have some games on a shelf, but it's not something I'm fussed about. Instead, I prefer my games to be locked away from prying eyes in little cases, just like I did in the 80s. Or just stacked in piles, if I'm really honest. Looking back, these storage vessels feel like, on one hand they helped protect, but on the other hand have made collecting today all that bit harder. But maybe that is a good thing. Maybe the thrill of finding mint condition box titles today is part of what makes it worthwhile. In any case, I'll still look fondly back on those gaming treasure chests.